You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Royal Highness, the uh, Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa received today the U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Severo, at Glebia Palace in the presence of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. During the meeting, His Royal Highness noted the long standing relations between Bahrain and the United States, which continue to advance the development and prosperity of both countries and their people. His Royal Highness highlighted the role played by the United States in maintaining security and stability in the region. The meeting also provided an opportunity to review regional and international affairs of common interest. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, First Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Civil Service Council, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, ordered the formation of an investigation committee headed by the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to investigate a circulated letter signed by a number of employees at a government agency. His Royal Highness instructed the committee to investigate the intent and identify any administrative irregularities or violations that do not comply with the regulations and provisions of the law. He stressed the importance of continuing to uphold accountability and responsibility as core pillars of the rule of law in line with Bahrain's commitment to safeguard rights and promote sound practices in line with the objectives of the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Rohan has emphasized the need to fully apply with the law in light of the kingdom's commitment to its principles and dedications to serve the country and its citizens. The Speaker of the Representative Council, Fawziya Zainal, attended the annual conference for parliamentary development in Russia along with a parliamentary delegation. Zainal said that international security requires an ongoing effort to hold parliamentary dialogue with the objective of legislating on matters related to stability and security. She affirmed that Bahrain is carrying on in a path of development and progress through well-studied plans and sincere patriotic efforts, all of which is supported by the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. She added that Bahrain offers an environment that is conducive for legislation and initiatives that respond to the needs and aspirations of the youth, all of which enjoy the keen interest of His Majesty the King and have turned Bahrain into a model to emulate regionally and beyond. Zainal illustrated that this by citing international Nasr bin Hamad Prize for youthful innovation, which has been nurturing the skills and talents of the youth. On the sidelines of the International Forum Development of Parliamentarianism held in Moscow, Bahrain's parliamentary delegation, chaired by Council of Representative Speaker Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal, met today the chairwoman of the Russian Federation Council, Valentina Madvienko. Zainal affirmed that the Bahraini-Russian relations are witnessing remarkable development and cooperation at various levels and in various fields. She stated that the coming period will witness the implementation of parliamentary cooperation between the Representative Council and the Russian Federation Council to increase cooperation and the exchange of expertise. For her part, the chairwoman of the Russian Federation Council congratulated Zainal on the presidency of the Council of Representatives, which is a landmark parliamentary achievement, stressing the continuous and distinguished development in Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty the King. It's very interesting here. It's already the second time. I've been here already last year, and it's improving more and more, and I think it's very important to connect people, to connect parliamentarians, but also to connect the world. There are some... Um, official friendship organizations between parliamentarians. I'm, for example, a member of the uh, Russian-German group of parliamentarians and we have guests from Russia and we are visiting Russia, meeting parliamentarians. And this is also the same with um, Arabic countries like Bahrain and other countries. But I'm a member of the German-Russian group. This is why I'm here. And it's very interesting to meet people and to have uh, other opinions and uh, this forum helps getting in touch, talking, meeting people and bringing the world forward, as I hope. I believe that this is a unique opportunity for parliament uh, members around the globe to join and make effort in order to establish peace in the different country and the different uh, continent. It, uh, because it is our responsibility as elected member, as representative of the people to work out a policy strategy 
so that our countries could enjoy the, the benefit of a stable place so that the present and future generation could develop themselves in a peaceful way. Under the patronage of the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of Muntalakat Holding Company, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, in the presence of a number of ministers and officials from the relevant government agencies, the inauguration ceremony of the port of Hwar Island Points in the eastern coast was held this morning. More on this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of Mumtalakat Holding Company, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, assured that facilitating access to and from Hawar Islands, providing a safe and luxurious transport experience for visitors, are one of the most important pillars of the strategic plan pursued by the Southern Tourism Company in implementation of the royal order of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to turn Hawar Islands into an important tourist destination. Sheikh Khalid added that the trend towards diversifying points of departure to Hawar Islands comes after the record results achieved in terms of numbers of visitors, daily trips and room occupancy at the Hawar Beach Hotel during this year compared to the same period of last year's. A very good kick up to the numbers of passengers and guests uh, have gone to Hawar. Uh, for example, on the half year of 2017, uh, we transported uh, 1,080 uh, passengers. In 2018, half year, it uh, goes up to 2,500. And it's amazing, in 2019, we reached 3,100 passengers. So we can see that Hawar is the, really, the, it has a hope as an eco destination, and we need really to attract the tourists, the Bahrainis and the foreigners to go and discover Hawar in the future. New boats and many activities are taking place to revive entertainment and tourism at the port itself and Hawar Islands. So we've built the 16-metre passenger ferry, takes up to 40 passengers for the Southern Tourism Board of Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, the vessel does 42 knots and she's very safe at sea and very stable. Our activities are starting with uh, uh, boat trips, which is a uh, short trips like uh, 30 minutes for families and one hour. And the other trips is uh, uh, we are heading from uh, Manama, Cornish, Al Fatah, uh, proceeding to Aldar Island uh, with a maximum of 10 passengers. And we have also uh, uh, fishing trips, uh, snorkeling and diving and we have a trip to Al Jarad Island. On the inauguration ceremony, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah expressed his pleasure in reactivating the port of Hawar Islands in Manama, developing its facilities and improving its services. He reiterated that this site has a historical dimension, which is the first starting point to the Hawar Islands. Another strategic concept is the easy access of visitors to it by citizens, residents and tourists. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdul Ghaffar. The Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee, chaired by the representative Mohammed Sisi Al-Bu'ainin, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al-Khalifa, today in the Representative Council. During the meeting, the Foreign Affairs Minister hailed the national role of the Representative Council and the Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security Committee, as well as efforts to enhance security and stability with national awareness and responsibility. For his part, Representative Al-Bu'ainin expressed appreciation to the Foreign Affairs Minister and his keenness to communicate and consult with the Representative Council and the Foreign Affairs, Defense the National Security Committee on various affairs of concern to the Kingdom and its citizens. He noted the role and efforts exerted by the Foreign Minister to increase the Kingdom's status, stressing the Council and Committee's support to these efforts. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed briefed the members of the Committee on the important constructive results achieved by the Peace for Prosperity Workshop, which stemmed from the Kingdom's keenness on establishing security, peace, development and prosperity in the region. He also briefed the members of the Committee on the measures taken following the attack on the Embassy of Bahrain in Baghdad, in cooperation with the officials of Iraq who expressed their rejection and condemnation of the attack. 
Under the patronage of the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, the Ministry of Education organized an honoring ceremony for 2005 secondary schools, top achievers, graduates with special needs in integration schools, and students who implemented outstanding projects in the field of technical and vocational education in the presence of a number of ministry officials and student families. The minister affirmed that the increase of outstanding students reflects the development of the educational march during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty's support of educational development, noting the ministry's keenness to celebrate outstanding students. He added that the efforts exerted by the kingdom in the field of education have been reflected in its performance in relevant international reports, and Naimi congratulated the students, their families and their schools, and the certificates were then distributed. The 2019 MENA Regional Forum on Green Economy, held under the patronage of the Supreme Council for the Environment, organized by the World Green Economy Organization in close cooperation with the United Nations Office for South-to-South -South Cooperation and the UN Resident Coordinator Office, as well as in partnership with a number of key stakeholders with the aim to help create an open and conducive knowledge-sharing setting aimed at supporting the participants and further improving their understanding on the trends and opportunities on the ways towards advancing green economy agenda in the MENA region. The MENA Regional High-Level Forum Forum on Green Economy aims to promote successful evidence-based green economy solutions that meet the needs of countries and the region in implementing the UN Sustainable Development Agenda 2030. The forum is a result of the success of the annual since 2014 World Green Economy Summit model and a direct response to the requests of participating countries and institutional partners to bring green economy solutions closer to the regional context and to deepen the impact of transition to a green economy through scaling up of successful practices at the regional level. We were hosting, an, I think, an important meeting about the green economy with the collaboration of all the green economy organizations and uh, South to South Office of the United Nations. This organization is going to educate the whole stakeholders in Bahrain about the green economy and the investment of our green futures. I would like to call it not the green economy. I would like to call it a sustainable economy. A economy that will provide our young youth jobs of opportunities uh, on the field that is environmental friendly. The government of Bahrain started the transition to green economy through Vision 2030, which was launched by His Majesty the King in 2008 in the presence of His Highness uh, uh, the Prime Minister and His Highness the Crown Prince and it shows the commitments of the highest level in the Kingdom of Bahrain to making sure that this will happen. And for this, of course, uh, you require also a body or authority who is dedicated to follow up and champion the cause. And for this purpose, we established a Sustainable Energy Center and this center, establishment of this center was approved by the cabinet in December 2013. We're very proud to participate in this very important meeting on green economy. Uh, it's, it's really, the time is right now. Uh, there is a tremendous change in the world, uh, especially after the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda where a lot uh, focuses on uh, reducing consumption, improving efficiency, renewable energy, uh, and to mitigate the climate change. And this will require a, a change in the type of uh, businesses available, in types of jobs available. Uh, we in the United Nations uh, are very proud to support the government of Bahrain in bringing experiences from other countries that uh, can influence the different development policy thinking and also take good examples that are in Bahrain uh, such as the Sustainable Energy Center, such as the trends happening right now in the Ministry of Economy where they're changing